The Samsung Galaxy Watch 5, Watch 5 Pro, and even the Watch 4 and Watch 4 Classic all have blood pressure monitor and electrocardiogram features that are applicable. They have been approved by Health Canada, so they are active. If you have those watches, and especially if you have a Samsung device, you are ready to use them. Let's start with the ECG. An electrocardiogram measures the electrical activity going on with the heart. Okay, so if there's something that seems off, like an atrial fibrillation, something like an irregular heartbeat, it, it will look for that. But the feature in this case is not necessarily going to detect an irregular heartbeat, but it will notice something that might seem off in the way that the heart's working. Okay, very key, very, very key caveat there. This device, even when you set up the ECG, is not an alternative necessarily to obviously uh, medical devices and medical tests that would more properly diagnose for those things. What this is primarily, if anything, at least in my opinion, is more so some sort of an early warning system, something to kind of give you a heads up if something feels off, especially if there's some consistency in that. So if you're doing regular readings and things look strange or look off, and maybe you're not feeling well as well, that for that point, definitely, you see a doctor and you say, hey, this is the data that I've been getting, what do you think? Setting up the ECG is not that hard, and I'm showing you here how it's done based on you know, just setting it up on, an, on a Samsung phone. Uh, once you've paired the watch with the phone, you do need to do this through an app called Samsung Health Monitor. That app is available in the Galaxy Store. You're not gonna find it in Google Play. You go into the Galaxy Store and you'll find it. However, one of the easy way I find that this works is if you actually open up that app on your Galaxy Watch and then you'll open it up on the phone because they're paired together. That'll make it a little bit easier just in case it doesn't show up in a search or you're having a hard time finding it. So that do that little trick and you'll find it. Now, once it's set up, Health Monitor will update, it'll apply everything, it'll set everything up so that you can then calibrate to get the ECG going. It's not a hard process, it's actually quite easy and you should be up and running in no time. Once you're set up, Getting an ECG reading is very easy. You'll notice how I'm sort of doing it here. I, again, the reading is not, because you have to be still, and I tried to film this in a way where I could be very still, but it was not easy. Uh, and I didn't have anybody to help me, unfortunately. But basically the idea is you gotta be still and it'll take a little bit to measure the, re you know, take a good reading. But once it does, you'll see, you know, after about 30 seconds, it takes a reading and, and, and then you'll see basically where you stand. You'll notice also uh, that it's looking for, there are four diff distinct results that you can get, uh, both one of which could be you know, poor result or inconclusive, something that basically just will not give your reading. Uh, and then in other cases will be like everything's fine or that something might be off. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's really the only way to interpret the data. Now, one thing I did like that Samsung did here is that they've thrown in some explainers. So if you're not quite clear or you're not sure exactly what to do or how what to look for, there is information within the app, uh, within Samsung Health Monitor as you're doing this that will help you out with that. When it comes to the blood pressure monitor, you do need a little more of a setup in this case. You'll need an actual blood pressure monitor to do this, at least to set it up. Okay, that's, uh, we're talking about the one that, you know, you, you sort of cuff it around your arm, right? Or this arm, whichever, you know, it has to be the opposite arm of whichever you're wearing the watch. So if you're wearing the watch on your left arm, you have to put the blood pressure monitor here. The idea is that when set up, the watch recognizes that a blood pressure uh, reading is taking place and it, it will have you do it three times where it then calibrates so that it can then do it on its own. Once that's done, you can have a blood pressure reading anytime you want, but ideally for either the ECG or the blood pressure monitor, you do have to abide by certain things to get the proper reading. So for example, you know, don't take a blood pressure monitor reading once right after you've had a glass of wine, for instance, right? Uh, or don't take an ECG or even a blood pressure monitor reading if you just put the watch on, you haven't worn it for a little while. Uh, things like that, but all those are actually mentioned in the app. So the, those are things that, again, if you read through, uh, you'll notice that there are a lot of tips and pointers in there just to make sure that you're using it properly. Uh, the BPM was the thing I had the hardest time with. I, I initially could not get it to uh, recognize the watch, even though the ECG worked perfectly fine and it linked up and everything worked. The BPM did not work initially, but I finally got it to work with some help from Samsung and it was a fairly easy process to calibrate it. Uh, after that, I used it and bear in mind also that you have to do this process that I've just described every 28 days for the blood pressure monitor in particular, 
Every 28 days, you gotta go through the whole process again of calibrating it just to keep everything fresh and just to make sure that it's working properly. When you calibrate for both these features, it is for you. It doesn't mean that you've calibrated it and then you can put the watch on a loved, like a family member or somebody else and get a reading that way. It's, it's not gonna work like that. You have to set it up for whomever is actually gonna use it. It's not like a blood pressure, like an actual blood pressure monitor where anybody can use it and get a reading. In this case, it's primarily for you. Anytime that you do an ECG or a BPM reading, that info will sync over to the Samsung Health app for you to see it. After a while, as you do more of them, then you'll get aggregate data. So what was your average for a week? What was your average for a month? Things like that, right? That data may be something worthwhile as far as sharing with your doctor. Again, it's not the, these are not substitutes for medical advice, but they may, it may be data that could be interesting to share with a doctor who can then perform regular tests that would be more precise, right? So as I'm gonna close here, these features are more like early warning systems. They are there to give you a clue, but they're not there to tell you exactly what's going on. You're not gonna get any context. You're not gonna know why you're getting a certain reading. Why is blood pressure low? Why is an ECG looking a little bit off? It's not gonna tell you why those things are happening. So now you know how these features work and you can use them at your own leisure and at your own precaution. You can read the fine print of the Samsung Health Monitor and it's up to you how you share that information, whether it is with loved ones or your doctor. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy Kay. Thanks for watching.